A process group includes the portfolio management processes that are linked by their respective inputs and outputs where the result or outcome of one process becomes the input to another process. So the 16 portfolio management processes are categorized into three process groups and usually those that falls into one category or one process group are linked together with their inputs and outputs. The process groups should not be thought as of portfolio management phases. The table below reflects the mapping of the 16 portfolio management processes into three portfolio management process groups and five portfolio management knowledge areas. As mentioned earlier, our course is structured based on the knowledge areas and not the process groups. Each of the key portfolio management processes is shown in the process group in which most of its activities takes place. So you can see on the left column the five portfolio management process knowledge areas, strategic management, governance management, performance management, communication management, and risk management and here you can see the process groups defining process groups aligning process group and authorizing and controlling process group each one of the 16 processes here should be mapped to a knowledge area and a process group in this course i will walk you through the 16 processes as per the knowledge areas we will discuss the inputs tools techniques and outputs of each of them so starting with the first process group, the defining process group, which consists of those processes performed to establish how the organizational strategy and objectives will be implemented in portfolio. It determines the portfolio strategic plan, portfolio structure and roadmap. It defines and authorizes a portfolio or sub portfolio and develops the portfolio management plan and subsidiary plans. So usually the processes that fall into the defining process group are the ones where that will establish how the organizational strategy will be linked to our portfolio. The key artifacts that will be outputs of this process group includes the strategic plan, the roadmap, the authorization of the portfolios through the charter and the portfolio management plan. All these are outcomes of the defining processes. The defining process group is most active at the time the organization identifies and updates strategic goals, usually on annual basis. So the defining processes are usually conducted at the time the organization updates its strategic goals, its near-term budgets and plans. These activities take place at the annual budgeting time or business review meetings, although some organizations have more or less frequent cycles but this is the time at which the defining process group processes will take place such activities could be scheduled quarterly for example or may occur because of unscheduled changes on the organization like mergers or reorganization changes in the structure of the organization changes in the enterprise environmental factors etc so in addition to the annual updates to the strategic goals of the organization, any of those events might cause the defining processes to be conducted. The second process group is the aligning process group, which consists of processes to manage and optimize the portfolio and its components. This group determines how portfolio components will be categorized, evaluated, selected for inclusion, modification or elimination, and managed in the portfolio so as part of the aligning process group we are going to define our portfolio prioritize it and optimize it and authorize the portfolio as well the aligning process group promotes and supports the portfolio based on the strategic goals of the portfolio through the operational rules for evaluating components and building the portfolio the processes in this process group enable the establishment of a structured method for aligning the mix of portfolio components to the organization's strategy. So the optimal mix of the portfolio components will be the key output of the aligning process group. It is most active after the portfolio organization has defined and developed its strategic goals, near-term budgets and plans, and usually these activities are used to manage the ongoing portfolio activities. And the last process group is the authorizing and controlling process group 
which consists of the processes for determining how to authorize the portfolio and provides ongoing portfolio oversight. So we will be monitoring the portfolio performance as part of this process group. These two processes are central to all the portfolio management processes and they are the process steps and activities necessary to enable the portfolio as a whole to perform to achieve matrix defined by the organization. This process group determines how to monitor the strategic changes, how to manage the impact of those strategic changes. All this will be part of this process group, how to track and review the performance indicators for alignment in the portfolio and authorizes the portfolio components and verifies values that are delivered to the organization from the portfolio, including suggestions and best practices for better strategic planning in the future. So the key activities of this process group are all around managing the portfolio, providing the portfolio oversight and managing and assessing the changes. These authorizing and oversight processes are the active part of the portfolio and they are usually an ongoing function of the organization's governing body. The portfolio manager often repeats this group and individual constituent processes during the portfolio management process. There will be, or these processes are iterative. There will be a lot of interactions. Some of the processes will be conducted more than one time. The process groups are not phases and do not constitute a life cycle. So there is a different difference between the portfolio phases and the portfolio management process groups. The process groups might be repeated for each portfolio or sub portfolios.